I was upstairs in the bedroom, and I went upstairs to talk to him. He wasn't breathing. When I got there, was he lying on the bed? Yeah. Another. Okay, I'll try and set the record straight on Elvis's passing away. <clears throat> August 16, 1977, we were getting ready to go on tour. That evening, we were supposed to fly to Portland, Maine. I was there at the house. It was in the afternoon around 2 o'clock. Al Strada, his wardrobe man, was there packing the wardrobe cases. I was down there on the phone talking to different people and making arrangements with the flight crew to fly out that evening phone call comes from upstairs on the intercom and, and Ginger called down and uh, talked to the maid she says Any, is anybody down there so Al is right here so she hands the phone to Al Strada she says Al come upstairs Elvis has fainted Al runs upstairs and he calls down with great cause calls me he says Joe come up here. I need you right away so I ran upstairs I go into the bathroom and I see Elvis on the floor uh, he, was, he fell off from, from the, the commode. Uh, his face was buried in the carpeting, and I bent down real quick, and I touched him, and uh, I could, he was, Rigor Morris had set in. And uh, so I turned him over real quick. I pulled up his pajamas bottoms. I turned him over and laid down, and uh, I heard a little breath of air come out of his lungs. So I thought maybe there was a, he was, it was going to be okay, but I just didn't feel comfortable about it. Grab the phone real quick. There's a phone on the wall right next to the commode, and I called 911, and uh, I said, we need an ambulance at Graceland. We should get somebody real quick. And then Al picked up the phone and tried to get Dr. Nick while I was trying to... I, now, there's a, there's a story that says I gave Elvis mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I did not give Elvis mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. No, you couldn't. His mouth was closed shut. And there was no way I could open his mouth, so, but I did try to massage on his heart. At that point, uh, things were starting to happen. Uh, Vernon was in the office. He came up to the, to the bathroom. He came in, and he started you know, saying, Elvis, Elvis, you know, don't, don't leave us. You know, just hang in there. And, and then Ginger was there, and Lisa and Marie was at Graceland at the time. Lisa came running around, and Ginger, was, she's standing there too. And I asked Ginger, please get Lisa out of here. And uh, we're waiting for the ambulance to show up. And meanwhile, uh, uh, Al got a hold of Dr. Nick. Uh, he was on his way to, to, to Graceland. Uh, the ambulance shows up. It seemed like it took forever for the ambulance to get there. Uh, the, the guys came up, and uh, they started lifting Elvis up and got him on the stretcher. We went out the back, out the front door, rather, took Elvis in the stretcher, um, got him in the back of the ambulance. Just as we got out there, uh, Dr. Nick pulled up. He jumped out of his car and jumped in the back of the ambulance. And it was Charlie Hodge, Dr. Nick, and myself went to the hospital with Elvis. Uh, we got to the Baptist Memorial Hospital. The ride to the, to the hospital seemed like it took forever, too. And Dr. Nick was trying to talk to Elvis, so, you know, stay, hang in there. And he had the, whatever that bottle is, with the oxygen over his mouth, hoping that could revive him. Um, uh, got to the hospital. Uh, the emergency room people were waiting for us when we got there, uh, took him on, on a stretcher, took him into the emergency room real quick, and they stopped me and uh, Charlie from coming in there. Dr. Nick went in there, and they escorted Charlie and I to another room. Meanwhile, all, I guess, all hell was breaking loose in different parts, and the rumors were getting around, and uh, Elvis's cousin, Billy Smith, came to the hospital, uh, met me there. Um, uh, I don't even remember who else showed up. And they took us in this room. We were sitting there waiting to find out what was going on. And about 20 minutes later, Dr. Nick came into the, into the room where we were. And he walked and he said, Elvis is gone. And uh, it was hard. And uh, the PR guy from the hospital uh, wanted to know if I want to make the announcement to the press. And uh, I said, I'll try. But meanwhile, 
uh, Dr. Nick said, don't say anything to anybody yet. I'm going to go back to the house and tell Vernon before it hears on the news. So he, the police department was there, and they took Dr. Nick out to the hospital, out to the house. And uh, meanwhile, I got on the phone and called uh, Priscilla to tell her that uh, Elvis was gone. And uh, she wasn't home at the time. I got a hold of her sister, Michelle. And Michelle uh, said, uh, what's wrong? And I said, I got to talk to Priscilla. And just so I had Priscilla came in the house at the time, and I told her what happened. And she went hysterical. And she said, how's Lisa? How's Lisa? I said, Lisa's fine. You know, don't worry about that. And so I'll make arrangements that the plane come out and get you. And uh, then I called Colonel Parker in Portland, Maine, and got him on the phone and told him what happened. And he sort of didn't know what to say. He was in shock at the time. He said, OK, do what you have to do. I'll be there this evening. And uh, at that point, uh, press was all starting to show up. The rumors were getting around. The newspapers were showing up, and radio stations were announcing Elvis is in the hospital. And uh, I just couldn't make, I couldn't go out and talk to the press. So I had the PR guy from the hospital talk to him. Uh, he made the announcement to them that Elvis had passed away of a heart attack. Charlie and Billy and I all hugged each other and uh, had the police department, one of the police department men took us back to the house, Graceland. Just went into a, a mode to help him. I went and saw Vernon, talked to him, and I told him, I said, anything you need, we're here to help you. We all got together and figured out how to make arrangements for this, uh, for Elvis's uh, funeral. And we just did it. It was a lot of work. Phone calls were coming in from around the, the world. Uh, and Margaret called. She was playing Vegas at the time. And uh, she wanted to come. And I said, well, you know, it's going to be a mess here. And she says, I'm going to come anyhow. So her and Roger Smith came. And, George Hamilton showed up, and a lot of other people who just said, just don't come, it's going to be too hectic. And we started making arrangements. And Vernon uh, asked me if we could get all white limousines for the funeral, because all of us loved white. The Memphis Funeral Home, the people came out and saw us, and Vernon wanted the same casket that he had for Elvis' mother, Gladys. Same casket for Elvis. I have to give those people credit. They, they really did a good job, because it was made of solid copper and uh, it weighed a ton. They had to fly it in from another state. They got all these limousines from different states around. We all just worked together and did it. It took me about three months after Elvis was gone to realize he was gone. You know, I just, we, we did what we had to do for his sake. Uh, the procession of the people coming in through the house was just unbelievable. These people were crying, they were fainting. Uh, it was tough, but we did it. And uh, I think uh, Elvis was pretty proud of the way it was handled, you know. And uh, it was a day on her for you.